So we wanted to build this absolutely awesome PC workstation and it hasn't quite gone to plan. <laughs> However, hopefully today we're gonna find the solution and then we can actually see how fast this thing is. Hi, my name's James from The Picture House, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at all of these random boxes of equipment, which we will put together and we will build a workstation PC, a really bad boy workstation PC, like quite possibly one of the most powerful workstation PCs out there, hopefully, providing it all goes to plan. But essentially, we've gone away and done our research and we found a whole bunch of components that we're gonna to put together in order to build a workstation that absolutely rips through the software that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. You might be asking why a video production company is putting together a video on what components to use in a editing workstation. Since the beginning of our business, and also since the beginning of my career, we've been putting together PC workstations. Um, we've been building them ourselves for a number of reasons. So we understand the technology that's in the computer, so therefore we can maximize its use. But also so we can upgrade and repair the workstation ourselves, minimizing downtime and optimizing the computer's use. And when specking up a new machine, we we thought, why not show what components we're using and why we're using them? So fundamentally, we do most of our video editing and color grading in DaVinci Resolve. We do our motion graphics animation in Adobe After Effects. We also sometimes use Premiere Pro. We also do image processing and retouch in Capture One and Photoshop. So we needed to find a workstation that across the board would work really well for all of those software applications. We're in February of 2025, so these are the latest and greatest components at the moment. If you're watching this in the future, then they probably aren't the latest and greatest. But <laughs> we're also super excited about the new 50 series graphics cards from NVIDIA. We have here the RTX 5080. We wanted to get a 5090, but we couldn't get our mitts on one, unfortunately. They were just impossible to get a hold of on launch day, but we managed to get a 5080, which we're really excited about. We've been using RTX graphics cards for as long as I can remember. We have a 3090, a 4090, and now a 5080. This machine will have a 5090 eventually when we can get our hands on one, but for now, we're gonna build it with the 5080, do a benchmark and see how it compares. We'll then swap out the 5080 for a 4090, and then do a direct comparison on this same workstation and we'll see how the previous generation top tier graphics card compares to this second rung down tier graphics card but in the latest generation, the RTX 50 series. So just a caveat, this isn't a play-by-play -play how to build a workstation video. There's loads of really, really great videos on YouTube on how to build a PC workstation. And we'll put a couple of links down below on how to actually put all of these components together. Okay, so we're gonna start with the motherboard, which is a great place to start because that's where all of the components attach to, right? We've gone with the Asus ProArt X870E. Okay, what's great about this motherboard and the reason we decided to go for this motherboard is because firstly, it has an X870E chipset on board, which is the highest performance chipset for AMD processors. It has a wealth of excellent high speed ports on the back panel. So for example, this has two 40 gigabit per second USB-C ports on the back, as well as a number of 20 gigabit per second USB-C ports, as well as seven 10 gigabit per second USB type A ports. That's really important if we're offloading data from our V-Raptor, for example, the Red Digital Cinema Camera, which records huge files. We wanna be able to offload them super quick High-speed ports are fundamentally important to us. This motherboard also has two PCIe 5 ports, which is really important for this graphics card, the RTX 5080, or any of the 50 series graphics cards. They require PCIe 5 in order to work at their maximum bandwidth. 
The motherboard also has four M2 NVMe SSD ports. They're not ports. Ports. Support holes. <laughs> slots. They, they would refer to them as slots. So in terms of NVMe SSD slots as well, this is really feature packed. Two of them are PCIe 5, so that means they can run at crazy, crazy data transfer rates, and two of them are PCIe 4. And that means that the NVMe SSDs that you've installed are gonna be running at their absolute maximum performance. And that's crucial for using caching, like in After Effects and DaVinci Resolve. And it also means that your operating system and applications will load within seconds. They've also focused on it being a slightly more robust build, so therefore you've got reliability built in. And it's also got some key features such as 10 gigabit ethernet built into the motherboard itself. You don't need to have a separate PCIe 10 gig ethernet card plugged into this motherboard, which frees up your PCI Express ports. Okay, next we're gonna go with the processor, the central processing unit. <laughs> okay, next up, we're taking a look at our processor, and that is the Ryzen 9 9950X. This is a 16 core and 32 thread processor, which, according to all of the benchmarks that we looked at, scores very highly in all of the software that we use. It offers outstanding single core and multi threaded performance, and that means across the board. <laughs> And that means across the board, whether we're working with software that's optimized for multi-threaded processing or single core, it doesn't really matter. The performance with both is outstanding. Okay, moving on to quickly the CPU cooler, and we'll cover this very, very quickly because it's not very exciting, but we've gone with the Noctua NHD15, second generation and we've gone with an air cooler for a couple of reasons. One, because although liquid cooling is awesome and we do love it, some of our machines are liquid cooled, we have had it in the past where we've had reliability issues from liquid cooling. So air cooling offers great reliability. So that's why we've gone with this bad boy. This particular air cooler is really efficient and is also really quiet. So that means we haven't got this PC sat in our editing, editing room, humming away, making loads of noise. So it's a boring component, but Noctua, we love you. It's a really cool cooler. <laughs> Noctua, we're a really big fan of your components, so. I'm actually, I actually think coolers are really cool. I mean, they're, they're really interesting. Excuse the pun, but. Okay, uh, RAM, let's take a look at RAM. We've got, from a brand called G-Skill, we have got the Neo, what's it called? Trident Z5 Neo. And we specifically went with one without any RGB on it because I hate RGB. <laughs> this is the AMD EXPO version. It's optimized for AMD processors and chipsets, so this should be relatively plug and play. This is DDR5 6000, which is rated to work really well with this particular processor and this chipset. We decided to go for 64 gigs of RAM because, well, we actually wanted to go for 96 or 128 gig, but for some reason there seems to be a shortage of this particular type of RAM and that capacity. For the most part, 64 gigs is actually fine. All of our other workstations have 64 gigs of RAM and we never really run into any issues. We wanted to have more on this workstation just to have some overhead, but the way that Resolve and After Effects are now using fast NVMe SSDs for caching rather than the RAM does actually mean that 64 gigs of RAM will give us plenty of performance for most of the software that we use. Lexar. Okay, moving on to storage next. We have the Lexar NM790 NVMe SSDs, and we've got two of them, which are four terabytes in size. One of them will be for installing the operating system and for all of the applications that we use. And then the other one will be used purely as a cache drive or a scratch disk, as they're sometimes referred to. These are only PCIe 4, so we could actually upgrade it in the future for PCIe 5, but for the most part, 7,400 megabytes per second read speed is pretty damn good. <laughs>
and kind of the star of the show and one of the most exciting parts is this GeForce RTX 5080. I'm a massive fan of Nvidia. They've been leading the way, in my personal opinion, for graphics processing technology and what they're doing with all of their CUDA technology is absolutely amazing as well. So without a really powerful GPU, it wouldn't be possible to do a lot of the work that we do in Resolve, for example, or After Effects. They all heavily rely on the graphics processing unit. Instead of sending the processing to the CPU, a lot of it is done on the GPU. So it's really important to have a high-end, high-performance graphics processing unit. And NVIDIA are pretty much leading the way in terms of GPU performance. And this is, at time of recording, February 2025, this is one of the latest generation GPUs available on the market. So we're really excited to see how this thing performs, how it stacks up when compared to previous generations as well. Graphics cards are very exciting things. They're also very expensive things. <laughs> And then lastly, we have uh, our case. I mean, it's hard to get excited about a case, right? It's a metal box. This is a very nice metal box. This is from Fractal Design, and this is the North XL. And it's got some nice bits of wood on the front, which look kind of cool. It's got a bit of a Scandi vibe. It's got some IO ports on the top, like most cases do. It has a mesh panel on the side for good airflow. It's uh, hopefully also gonna be really nice to work on, but we'll find out about that shortly, <laughs> but yeah. Essentially, it's just a nice looking case. Okay, let's now take a look at how this machine performs. We've got a bunch of benchmarks lined up, which we're gonna run on this machine. And then we're also gonna compare the 4090 previous generation with this latest generation 5080 and see how it stacks up. say that it hasn't quite gone to plan is probably a little bit of an understatement. So eagle eye viewers may notice that I'm wearing slightly different clothes to the previous shots. Um, and that's because we're on day three of messing around with this system here. It doesn't normally take us three days to build a computer. <laughs> In fact, it only probably took us about two hours. But in and around the other work that we've got going on in the studio here, we've been coming back to this machine in order to try and get it running as best as we can. We haven't had the performance that we'd hoped and anticipated out of this workstation, but we think we might have identified why that is. So we haven't been able to run a Cinebench benchmark because the GPU is not supported. We haven't been able to do pubic, pubic? We haven't been able to do Puget Bench in DaVinci Resolve because we think the GPU is not yet supported. Because those are the two key bits of software that we use predominantly. After Effects and Premiere Pro we use a lot as well, but not quite as much as Resolve. We actually wanted to solve the problem for these key bits of software first before we went ahead and started looking at the performance in those other software applications like After Effects, Premiere Pro, Capture One because if Resolve is not working as it should do, for us, that's a big problem. So we need this machine to be a DaVinci Resolve workhorse, and currently it's not. Every time we open Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve, it wants us to optimize the neural engines. And without going into loads of detail, without optimizing these neural engines for your graphics card, you're not gonna get the best performance out of DaVinci Resolve. Once that's been done and optimized, you shouldn't ever have to do that process again because it saves that information within the software and then you don't need to, but you basically don't need to do it again ever. <laughs> we did a little bit of searching. We found an article on Reddit. We also found a link from that in that within that article on Reddit to a Facebook community post where people with 5080s and 5090s are having similar issues. Within that post, somebody shared some information about using the game ready driver rather than the studio ready driver for the 5080 and the 5090. And we're gonna try that now and see if that helps and resolves the issue. But ultimately we don't yet know. So we're gonna we're gonna do some experimenting and see if we can fix that issue. Obviously you will be watching this in the future. So future viewers, 
this will not be the latest driver, of course. For reference here, um, we are installing driver version 572.42, uh, and it is the February 13th, 2025 release. So, um, we tried turning it on and off again. There have been multiple times where we've tried just turning it on and off again. That door's going. <laughs> I can get it. Okay, so we've installed the the latest driver, which is the game ready driver. Um, and I am, of course, anticipating that it's going to want to opt optimize again because we're going to launch DaVinci Resolve for the first time on this machine. Um, so it is going to pop up and say optimize. That's fine. It's saying optimize DaVinci neural engines. We're going to click optimize. And it this takes like five minutes or so. So we're going to open up a project and then close Resolve and then reopen Resolve and then see if it pops up with the same optimized neural engines dialogue. It has. It has asked us to optimize the DaVinci neural engines again. So really sad for me because this thing's like like almost two grand two thousand pounds and did you keep a receipt i well we do have a receipt yeah we can send it back but genuinely like to even consider like sending it back because it doesn't actually do what 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 we need it to do hi future editing james here um i'm actually editing this video on this same workstation and the workstation is great it works really well but only after we swapped out the graphics card to our 1490, unfortunately. Despite trying different drivers and a whole bunch of other things, we couldn't get the 5080 working in DaVinci Resolve. We managed to get it through a benchmark in Puget Bench in Premiere Pro, so it does seem to work quite well in Premiere Pro. We couldn't get it to do a benchmark in After Effects, but it does appear to work okay in After Effects. But ultimately, it, it was throwing up a few compatibility issues for us. And it's really important that this machine runs DaVinci Resolve well. So we actually did end up swapping it to the 4090. So the 4090 is in this machine now. But we did manage to get one benchmark done, and that was the Puget Bench for Premiere Pro, which is kind of useless to us because we don't really use Premiere Pro, but still we thought it might be useful to share that information. I know a lot of you guys do use Premiere Pro um, and it also does give us a kind of an indication of some of the performance differences between the two graphics cards. So in Premiere Pro version 25.1.0, which is the 2025 version, and in Puget Bench benchmark version 1.1.1, this system with the RTX 5080 scored 15,948. And then when we swapped out the graphics card for the 4090, the score went down to 14,678. So that does tell us that the performance of the 5080 is better than the 4090 in Premiere Pro. Of course, you kind of need to take these benchmarks with a pinch of salt. I mean, ultimately, if you're using loads of really big video files, then the 4090 is probably going to be the better card for you because it's got more VRAM. But if you're not using really, really big files and you don't need that extra VRAM and 16 gigs of VRAM on the 5080 is going to be sufficient for you, then you know what? You probably are going to get better performance from a 5080 in Premiere Pro than you will from a 4090. But for us, a thousand point difference is really not groundbreaking. What's more important for us is that it actually works fundamentally. We can turn it on and we can crack on with our editing. And actually, this machine with a 4090 in it is absolutely awesome. And it flies through all of our post-production tasks. So to kind of wrap things up, this is a killer workstation spec. Ryzen 9950 on the Asus Pro R X870E motherboard with an RTX 4090, some super fast Gen 4 NVMEs, DDR5 6000, and a really nice case from Fractal Design. As a complete package, this is one hell of a workhorse.